Module 1, Introduction to Locally-Led Adaptation, Gender, Indigenous Factors, and the SDGs. Introduction to the course. Welcome to this e-learning course on locally-led adaptation, integrating gender, and Indigenous factors. Climate change adaptation ensures that the negative impacts of climate change are reduced through well-thought-out actions to benefit from opportunities that arise. Locally-led adaptation is a vital component of climate change adaptation since communities are the main stakeholders directly affected by the impacts of climate change. Working with communities needs to be socially inclusive, thus integrating gender and indigenous factors, among other intersectionalities, needs to be considered. This ensures that gendered impacts and issues are considered and addressed respectively, thereby leaving no one behind. The lack of capacity to leverage the enormous potential and strength of communities, along with bridging the gap between local knowledge, capacity, and participation, including gender responsive risk assessment and integration of gender equality and social inclusion factors in climate change adaptation, are some of the constraints in achieving holistic and sustainable adaptation measures so that they consider not only ecological and economic aspects, but also the socio-cultural political aspects of communities affected. Indigenous factors such as institutional, education and health, and labor are important in understanding the socio-political dynamics and decision-making processes of communities. The e-learning course is designed for those working in climate change adaptation strategies, policy development, plans, and programs, including those responsible for on-the-ground implementation from government and non-government sectors and the communities that are or have the potential to lead in adaptation. The modules may also be used for teaching and for the training of trainers. If you are one of those described here, this course is for you. If you do not find yourself in the above categories, I hope that you will find this course interesting and that you will be able to apply it in your line of work. These e-learning modules will be part of the Asia-Pacific Climate Change Adaptation Information Platform, or APPLAT. APPLAT supports science-based decision-making and effective climate change adaptation measures across the Asia-Pacific region. APPLAT is funded by Ministry of Environment Japan and developed and managed by National Institute for Environmental Studies. APPLAT responds to climate change risks by strengthening partnerships with diverse stakeholders and enhancing international adaptation efforts with a core focus on UNFCCC process. APPLAT has three core areas, namely scientific information and knowledge creation, tools development, and capacity building. The objective of this e-learning course is to increase awareness of the importance of locally-led adaptation and integrating gender equality and indigenous people's concerns in such actions. Four e-learning modules, including this one, will be used for various groups of stakeholders involved in climate change adaptation at the local level. These session modules provide the rationale and linkages of the various concepts, methodology and approaches on locally-led adaptation, integration of gender and indigenous factors, and processing and application of what was learned through analysis of real case studies. Interactive tools will be used during the sessions to ensure active participation. By introducing the concepts, methodologies, approaches, and real case studies, these interactive tools and e-learning modules would also assist in its application and operationalization. The Global Center on Adaptation stated that people and communities on the front lines of climate change are often the most active and innovative in developing adaptation solutions. Yet too often, they lack access to the resources and agencies needed to implement them effectively. Locally-led adaptation can unlock, support, and leverage the enormous potential and creativity of communities to develop and implement solutions. Shifting power to local stakeholders without expecting them to shoulder the burden of adaptation can catalyze adaptation that is effective, equitable, and transparent. The UN Women has emphasized that the climate crisis has a greater impact on women than men and in fact amplifies existing gender inequalities. Acting as a threat multiplier, the crisis is leaving women increasingly vulnerable to gender-based violence, the effects of future disasters, health threats, and other gender inequalities. In addition, the International Institute for Sustainable Development emphasized that effective climate change adaptation recognizes that women, men, and children experience impacts differently depending on where they live, how they sustain their livelihoods, and the roles they play in their families and communities. Natural resources are important for many indigenous people groups, including women, and are a key part of livelihoods and healthy, nutritious, and culturally appropriate food. In addition, traditional practices and resource management knowledge 
are an integral part of the identity and culture of indigenous women and groups. Climate change affects indigenous people's lives, culture, social structure, livelihoods, and the environment where they are located, and they need to be integrated with any climate change adaptation initiatives, including policies, research, and actions. Locally led adaptation will engage and mobilize the indigenous people to make use of their indigenous technical knowledge in developing solutions for their communities. The session modules. There are four e-modules for this course. This is the first module, which will provide you with a brief introduction to locally led adaptation, gender and indigenous factors, the sustainable development goals or SDGs, and other relevant international instruments, the current situation and interventions being undertaken. This module provides an overview and rationale for locally led adaptation and integrating gender and indigenous factors, how they are linked with a number of SDGs and actions being taken as examples of how to apply these linkages. Although it is common knowledge that everything is connected to everything else, there is still a tendency to overlook aspects that are not the mandate or specialization of certain agencies or organizations. The second module will look more closely at locally led adaptation, presenting the rationale and principles behind locally led adaptation to ensure local communities and stakeholders have ownership of the adaptation being implemented in their area. This will lead to empowered communities to implement sustainable and effective adaptation to climate change at the local level. The principles will be presented and you will be able to reflect on your experiences, if any, particularly on the challenges faced in implementing them and the results of locally led adaptation with or without consideration of gender and indigenous factors. SDG 11 on sustainable cities and communities and SDG 13 on climate action will also be discussed. The third module will provide a number of case studies on various climate change adaptation actions based on the LLA principles for discussion. As you listen, think of what suggestions you can provide on how to improve the case studies with more attention given to strategies incorporating locally led adaptation measures, gender, and indigenous factors, particularly applying the various aspects you learned during the course. The last module will be on Gender Equality and Social Inclusion, or JESSE, and Indigenous Factors. This module will look in more detail at JESSE and how they can be integrated with adaptation work. JESSE refers to all groups of people in the community, such as women, men, youth, disabled, elderly, indigenous, migrants, stateless, and other social groups. The Gender Dimensions Framework will be presented, which will provide a framework for integrating gender in any action. The social inclusion part will focus on indigenous peoples and the disabled and how they can be included in the adaptation agenda with a gender responsive approach. Gender, ethnicity, and disability status are critical considerations and constraints in participatory approaches and disaster responses. Some methods and approaches will also be shared to provide you with tools to use in your own work. Indigenous factors that need to be considered in gender responsive LLA include institutional, political stability, corruption index, accountability, government effectiveness, rule of law, education and health, access to education and health services, quality of education, sanitation, water supply, labor force, youth unemployment, child labor, women. The module will also include examples of locally led adaptation initiatives that are Jesse blind and those that are Jesse sensitive or responsive, including working with women, youth, disabled, and indigenous peoples you will have an opportunity to share your experiences of working with these groups and the challenges they faced. SDG 5 on gender equality and SDG 10 on reduced inequality will also be discussed. Definition of terms. So, after providing brief overviews of the rest of the modules in this course, let us look at the basic definitions of various terminologies related to locally led adaptation, gender, and indigenous factors that we will use constantly in this course. We will then discuss the linkages and importance of locally led adaptation and integration of gender and social factors, including indigenous factors and other intersectionalities, the relevant SDGs and international instruments. Gender is socially constructed. It is assigned to sex and then correlated with appropriate behavior. For example, in a certain sector, there is sexual division of labor, including restrictions on, especially, women's behavior. However, gender is not fixed and can change over time. Gender equality refers to the state or conditions where people of different genders enjoy the same or equal rights and opportunities, regardless of their gender identities. Gender equity means fairness of treatment for all genders according to their respective needs. 
This may include equal treatment or treatment that is different, but which is considered equivalent in terms of rights, benefits, obligations, and opportunities. Measures must be taken to compensate for historical and social disadvantages faced by people of certain gender identities, for example, women, to ensure a level playing field. Indigenous factors are those that affect indigenous culture, which is the collective identity, values, beliefs, practices, and traditions of the original inhabitants of a region or country. Indigenous culture is influenced by many factors, such as history, environment, politics, economy, and society. Some of the factors affecting indigenous culture include urbanization and migration, colonization, social and cultural determinants, globalization, and modernization, among others. Intersectionality is a concept coined in the 1980s by Kimberly Crenshaw and describes the interconnected nature of social categories or identities, such as race, class, and gender, as they create overlapping and independent systems of experience, discrimination, or disadvantage. Rather than isolate one identity category, privilege, or other points of marginalization, intersectional theory sheds light on the ways various vectors of identity, such as race and gender, impact one another to form unique subjectivities and experiences. Locally-led adaptation is defined by the World Resources Institute as recognizing the value of local knowledge and expertise to address climate risk and ensure that local actors on the front lines of climate change have equitable access to power and resources to build resilience. This topic will be explored more in Module 2. Social inclusion is the process of improving the terms on which individuals and groups take part in society, improving the ability, opportunity, and dignity of those disadvantaged on the basis of their identity, ethnicity, gender, social class, physical ability, and other intersectional factors. Sustainable Development Goals are at the heart of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development adopted by all United Nations member states in 2015, which provides a blueprint for peace and prosperity for people and the planet, now and into the future. The 17 SDGs are an urgent call for action by all countries, developed and developing in a global partnership. They recognize that ending poverty and other deprivations must go hand in hand with strategies that improve health and education, reduce inequality, and spur economic growth, all while tackling climate change and working to preserve our oceans and forests. All people-centered SDGs are relevant to this course, but the major ones are SDG 5, 10, 11, and 13. The figures below are from the UN SDG website, 